So hello everyone and welcome by the Orchid Saga. My name is Ilkion Wiersma. I'm an orchid grower from the Netherlands. And this is uh, going to be the last video of uh, this year for my channel. Uh, so I have a few things. It's a little bit of a bi bits and pieces, this video, uh, that I wanted to address before we uh, start enjoying uh, the last bit of this year and uh, hopefully a nice, very fresh new year. Uh, I had two questions that I wanted to talk about in a video from uh, you viewers, so that's uh, very nice, I think. The first one is from uh, Robbie Robertson, and um, well, actually you, you asked several questions, and I think that the first answer uh, will uh, answer basically all the questions. I hope that is uh, right. If it isn't, please let me know or you can uh, ask uh, another question or more. I, uh, I really enjoy the question, so don't uh, get me wrong. But what you basically ask is what, what um, in my opinion, what happens uh, and why I use this uh, calcium uh, magnesium powder. I will uh, give you a close up. But um, well, first of all, you have to understand the system because that's uh, why I use the stuff. My system, of course. I'm not saying that that is the system. It's my way of growing my orchid self-watering, so that's very important. So what I found, it took me over a year with uh, quite some lo uh, losses, and especially the root losses. I, uh, I lost a few orchids, but not that much, but I, I uh, like I said, it took me a year to figure out why my orchids keep losing their roots. Because uh, when I started, uh, the first thing, basically one of the first things you will learn is that um, inorganic media has the tendency to raise the pH. While orchids uh, like it a little bit lower, let's say around 6, something like that. So I thought I need uh, things to lower that pH. Um, and yes, that is the truth. but. Uh, I did forget that most people flush on a regular basis, maybe every week, maybe uh, every month. I think you mentioned that you flush every month, which is good, which is okay, which works, um, of, of course. But once again, it's not, not my system, so to speak. So uh, because what happened was that I stopped flushing. Um, I just have too many orchids to flush, uh, so yeah, it just happened. But then, like I said, after a year I did my measurements, I started to measure the pH, and I started finally to measure the pH inside of the reservoirs uh, of the orchids that did start losing their roots, and I found that the pH was incredibly low way, way too low. I'm talking about 2.8, in some cases 3 point something, so that was way too low. So then I, had a, uh, I, I start thinking about the system, of course, and I thought, well, I'm not going back to uh, organic media. I will stay in inorganic media. And in, back in the days, I watched uh, quite a lot of videos from Rick L. Uh, you probably heard of him. Uh, but uh, calcium and magnesium is very important, and that's what, uh, one of the things that I learned from Rick. But I also learned that calcium and magnesium, the powder stuff, which I have here in my hand, um, does start, let me uh, first show it to you guys. This, whoops, I'm sorry, this is basically it. It's the gray stuff, not the white stuff, but the gray. If it's gray, it means that it has magnesium in it. So I've been told. So uh, you don't want to use the white stuff. But um, what it also does is uh, raise pH. And it's good for your orchids. It's very healthy. Some extra calcium, some extra magnesium for the leaves, for the structures, for the new growth, roots, blooms, buds, etc. Just the whole overall health of the orchid. It's very good to have some extra uh, calcium, magnesium. So that was a bi very big bonus, and I started using this stuff, and I uh, started to, to build it up slowly, the amount. So I used a teeny tiny amount and measured my orchids every month and see how quick it started to drop again, because I still didn't flush, I didn't, uh, and never start flushing. So uh, then eventually I found that one scoop, one of that little tiny scoop for most 
arcs. Of course, it depends how much water you have in a reservoir, but I hope that does make sense in some way. But uh, I use one scoop and nowadays it's good for six months. So after six months, the pH will start to drop again and they need another scoop. So at the moment, I only give them twice a year this scoop and that's new. I didn't share it yet on my channel because I want to uh, be sure if it worked. Uh, so I'm a little bit earlier with this, but it's a little bit newer, um, uh, a newer approach to my uh, way of growing orchids. Not much, but I don't do the three monthly updates. And those videos are on my channel and they are probably uh, interesting for you guys who want to know more about the system to watch, just to start, to get a general feel of what happened, uh, happens to your uh, reservoirs uh, of the orchids when you don't flush. Plus, a very big plus, I fertilize only these days about 50 parts per million. N doesn't matter what I'm feeding, uh, but I don't go over the 50. Well, 80 is the max if it happens. But uh, I, I like to stick around 50, even in summer. That's also new. But I did it this year and I have wonderful results. And that's because, once again, I don't flush. So the fertilizer that is there from the previous watering, uh, that amount, the, the amount of parts per million will get higher as soon as I start uh, put in new water with fertilizer. I hope that, once again, it does make sense. The orchid is starting to eat a little bit of the fertilizer, but in most cases, even with that amount, I still have fertilizer in the reservoir. So the orchids did eat way less than I thought in the beginning. So I started to drop the amount of fertilizer and my orchids do wonderfully well. Of course, we always have a few, especially when I have 400 plus orchids. So there's always a uh, one or two that are not doing well, but overall so much better. So that's in a, in a uh, nutshell, my system. I hope this answered the questions. I think it does. Um, yeah, it works for me. But let me know if you have questions. And of course, uh, every viewer out there who uh, are, is interested in this uh, topic, please let me know uh, and ask your questions. That's the first one. Uh, that was a bit longer, but I had to tell uh, all the information there because it it's works together as one. So therefore, it was very important. The second one, I have even have a no my notes there. So that's why I'm keeping uh, looking at it. But uh, you will have the questions in, uh, in the screen, but I don't. Uh, basically, why pumice? Why I chose pumice? And um, I didn't uh, write your name. So I'm sorry, I don't know the name on top of my head. Uh, but thank you so much for asking the questions and I, both of you guys, I give you an answer uh, in the comments. But I, uh, li like I said, I like to address this, these questions also in my video. Um, why, why pumice? Well, actually it's uh, pumice and le uh, leka or lika. I, I, we say here in my uh, in Netherlands, we say leka. But I noticed that in, especially in America, if I'm correct, uh, you say lika. It's, it's, it's the same as leka. But uh, I chose pumice over LECA because I found, especially with new root tips, that the pumice is very friendly. It doesn't affect the new roots, where LECA does uh, in some cases. And pretty often I saw with different orchids, of course, some orchids didn't mind as much the, the roots, uh, but most, quite, quite a lot of orchids did, didn't mind the leca, and especially when it starts to dry. It's like it's, it's uh, so strong, the wicking effect is so strong in leca that it starts absorbing uh, water, moisture from the roots, and especially from the root tips, which results in die back. So, um, the root tips die off and those would start to shoot again some, in some cases, in most cases. But then again, you need to be um, on top of it and uh, probably uh, spray your root every day as at least a top layer or every other day if you want to keep your roots, the new roots healthy. And that was something I don't like. It's too strong and um, I didn't like the feel of LECA. It's, it's, uh, I, I, I like uh, organic uh, natural materials, 
uh, even though I use inorganic, but pumice uh, is also found if I'm correctly, uh, if I'm correct. Uh, so I've been told, I should say, uh, in, in, in nature as well. It's almost the same as a lava rock, but lava rock is made on the ground where pumice is formed in the air. So that lava is um, cooled down in the air and it leaves pumice. That's how I uh, been introduced to the both of them, the lava rock and the pumice. So it's basically the same. The color is a bit different. And I love ro lava rock, but lava rock is very heavy. And especially with repots, well, you can imagine what happens if you take them out of pot with, with these big pieces of lava rock. The ro root damage will be uh, major. So therefore, I tested pumice, and pumice is absolutely fantastic, if you ask me. It's my most favorite media ever that I ever tried. I, you never know, but I think I will use it the rest of my uh, orchid growing life because it's fantastic. It's, it's very easy to use. I can use it straight out of the bag. Of course, you can wash it, but I, I never did it. And the only thing that happens is after the repot, I give it a flush and some dust will come out. And I have somewhere a video about it, uh, how I prepare the lacquer. If you don't forget, I will put it in, uh, in the screen as an uh, option for you guys to, to watch. But uh, it's that simple. It's that simple. And that's not the reason why I chose it, of course, but it's very convenient. So uh, I don't like messing around with stuff too much if I don't have to. So uh, because of the time, I just... Uh, not always have the time. In the fussing around, to be honest, mm, no. If it, if it doesn't need it, so I, I will not give it. So that's, that's why the pumice is not as strong, probably. Not as strong in wicking-wise. I think that's the only thing I can think of why it basically leaves the roots growing. And I have no problem whatsoever. The root tips go everywhere where they want. And uh, so that's why I, I love that pumice. It's easy to clean. I, I barely have any salt built up. Of course, I don't fertilize it much, but still uh, when I flush it, uh, when I, after a word, I do a reading of the parts per million. It's very incredibly low. It's so easy to work with, for me at least. So that's, that's why I love it. Uh, you get the point. I love it. <laughs> so these were the questions for now. Uh, keep asking them if you, uh, if you want to, of course. I will uh, address them uh, later on in next year's video. Uh, what I wanted to do is some updates. Um, so I will take the camera off the tripod and we will have some updates because I have some blooms next to me, you guys. These are amazing. These are amazing. So let's do that and then I will uh, finish again on my tripod because I have something... Um, to talk about for next year. So yeah, you can see there are my notes, and here's the calcium. But look at these guys. I hope my camera will, will take them the color. I think it's pretty close. But that orange and yellow is absolutely stunning, if you ask me. Beautiful. A first time bloomer, and yes, I'm going to take the tag, it's this one. Let me grab the tag for you guys. That's Elsie Santa Barbara Sunset Showtime. Well, it is showtime. It's beautiful. <laughs> so I'm so happy I bought, uh, bought this orchid. I think, let me check. 2021 a repot. Yeah, I think I have it for two years, but probably three. I'm not sure from this uh, this very moment, but absolutely beautiful. So that's the first update, and we will have more. These are the spikes of my uh, golden elf, Ivanagara golden elf. Look at those bulbs, beautiful. So this one is doing uh, very good, very very well. It's having a Two spikes, two directions of growth. Sadly, the other Ivanagara is not really pushing on with the spikes. I'm not sure why. Maybe it was a little bit too cold. Not sure why. But over here, yeah, this is my tripod in a way, basically. But this is also a first-time bloomer. Let me uh, zoom in. Ren this is a Renko Stylus. Look at those buds. Red, I think it's called. 
So that one is doing well. It's the first time Bloomer. Then one well, next to it is my Peach. It's so it's coming back, but it was doing um, badly. I must admit. I think it was a little bit too hot in summer. And also in this corner, another update. Let me zoom out completely. Here we are. This encyclia, I never had it in bloom. It has a spike here and here. This is. Let me grab the tag. Cordigera. Cordigera. I hope I pronounced it correctly. Probably not. <laughs> First time bloomer for me. But um, yeah, the leaves. The leaves are a little bit discolored. We have some spotting there. I think it's cold damage. I'm not sure. Not sure. But anyhow, it does uh, make spikes, so I hope it will uh, recover from it. And my Rene Marquez, that's the also such a beautiful look at those colors. Absolutely fantastic. So yeah, so far the updates here. Let me uh, get the camera back on the tripod. So before I forget, this is the last part of the video and then uh, I'm going to leave it and I'm going to enjoy my uh, days off. I have a few days off. Uh, anyhow, but I, uh, um, I also um, uh, am starting a new project. So the next video, which will be in the new year, we will start off with a very interesting project, I think. I was inspired by one of the other orchid growers here on YouTube. Sadly, if I am correct, he doesn't make any videos anymore. But um, I thought it was, it's nice to start a new year with a new project. So that's uh, the first video in January. Uh, I also thought that's a nice uh, opportunity to make a new intro. My intro, maybe you saw it in the last few videos, is a little bit different because I had to copy it from an old video. Uh, I lost the footage. And also I thought it was time to do it a little bit differently. I shortened it a little bit more. I don't know about you guys, but if I watch videos and the intros are long, too long, that really annoys me all, all the time. So I keep skipping to the good stuff. And Believe me, if I have a few intros, shorter intros, I don't mind. I, I can enjoy, but they, yeah, not too long, not too long. So uh, I shortened it a little bit, and I think it's a little bit uh, better, a little bit nicer. It's just, uh, not much different, but you will see it in the next video uh, with a new uh, project. And I keep checking my list because I don't want to forget that. Do I have a, an example here? Yes, of course. Let me grab it. Whoops. Don't throw my notes on the ground. I'm back, you guys. I'm back. <laughs> so this one is also going to be, where is the spike? Here you can see the spike. A first time bloomer. And uh, this is a cross with the Cattleya Why Not, which I, the best name ever, if you ask me. But um, I cannot find the Cattleya Why Not. So, but I did find this cross with, uh, with that one. Um, and it only showed the, uh, back in the days, I have it now for, no, no, 22 it says on tech, but it's, I have it longer for two, three uh, years. It was a seedling, as you can see. Um, but it only did show the, the flowers of the parents. So I have no idea what we uh, will, uh, can, uh, expect, but so the, if I, yeah, at least we have two developing buds. Not much, but we can have a glimpse of the blooms, which is okay. But I didn't take it uh, for that reason, actually. <laughs> Maybe you, s you recognize it already, that black um, pot. It's a net pot. And I started using these more. Let me uh, try to grab it, get it out. Mm, it's a little bit difficult, but there we go. You can see this one has roots. Some discoloration there, but those, trust me, yeah, this part, well, actually, maybe that, but the rest is doing wonderfully well. And I have this in a net pot, and I'm showing you this, you guys, because we're going to do updates on this as well. I promised you I didn't forget, but I want to do the updates in late spring, early summer, because these plants did always lose their roots in winter. So therefore I put them in a net pot which is hanging above the reservoir. 
Thereby, I hope it's a little bit, it stays a little bit warmer inside of the pot. That's basically the idea behind the net pots. So I uh, wanted to remind me and you guys that I didn't forget about it, and we will talk about it more. But so far, it looks uh, like it does the trick for me. So that's a nice uh, project as well. It's an ongoing project, but it needs this time because I need a, a winter season, basically, just to see what, uh, what, uh, what happens. And, um, but so far as we saw it, it looks promising, at least for this one. This one is doing well. Let me have a quick li uh, look at the list. No, that's everything. I thought it was, but... Uh, and it is. It is. Um, there's always something to talk about, I, I, I know. But this is... Uh, I'm going to leave it for now with this video. And there's just one thing I really, really want to say. And that is a big thank you to you all. I'm uh, over 900 subscribers. And it means the world to me, you guys. It seriously means the world to me. It's so nice to have people that enjoy your videos. I really enjoy making them, sharing uh, with you guys what works and what doesn't work, and come up with some ideas, etc. Uh, answer some questions and make the video. So, so thank you so much. I really hope you have uh, uh, had wonderful Christmas time, and you will have a wonderful New Year's Eve. Uh, please be safe and uh, I hope to see you at my next video at the new project in uh, January, a fresh new year. Thank you and uh, till, until next time. Bye-bye. <laughs>